pushing on air. Press the You're listening to the Go Lightly Martial Hour on freedomtalkradio.net. chat room soon. <laughs> Nobody said hello yet. So, <laughs> All right, it feels like we're talking to an empty until somebody says hello. But anyway, um, today is Monday the 29th of June in the year 2015. We are broadcasting once more from the home of Blue so, from Tugu. As I've said forever, keep looking up. Right. Now it's time to keep looking up. All right, well, can we get through the formalities first before we, you know, launch off into a tangent of planets coming in and, <laughs> you know, the rumours of war. I was going to have a cup <laughs> most exciting thing that's happened through the weekend, right? Oh, <laughs> so, um, now, the other exciting thing is that Yah's on camera. He hasn't been for months. <laughs> he does that deliberately. So, hello there, and we are on the same side of the desk. So, we have no longer the blue wall behind me. We have the beige wall behind us. <laughs> and I'm wearing one of Yah's shirts because uh, he's, looking all, look he's looking all gorgeous in his blue and white, matches his eyes, and i uh, Got the red on to match, well, not match the lips because they're orange, but anyway. <laughs> um, what are we going to talk about? We haven't a clue as usual. How, however, as usual. Well, 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 however, well, you, you might, I never do. Oh. But Rodney has provided a lovely well, I, message. I, the first thing you've got to remember that tomorrow, Australia time, the 30th of June, and 2015. Talking Port Moresby because Port Moresby is where it's all been going down. Um, that is the nation that was 31.68 when I was uh, 31.68 years old, Lord Jesus Christ, as you know. On their independence. On their independence day, the 16th of September 1975. Interestingly, anyone who's born in uh, New Guinea before that date is an Australian. Yes. Didn't know that, did you? Ooh. Which takes me so, right back to uh, the De Quiros Declaration when he... Exactly. His description of the people who are living here describes not the Aborigines but the Papuans and the Melanesians. From the but I, I wanted to talk primarily to the uh, local police here uh, in Harvey Bay. Um, they have a permanent invitation to come out here with guns drawn, it doesn't matter to me, to come in and have a talk. Uh, off duty, fine. On duty, doesn't matter. Um, comparing the Australian police to the Canadian police, there's no contest. Uh, when I was in Canada um, and I was yarding me off to the Forensic Institute after I had given them all the information. Um, in handcuffs, they throw me in the back of a van, they drive me down to um, Wilkie Maximum Security Prison from Port Alberni. And they're all singing on with Christian soldiers, these arrogant bastards. And I said, well, you guys better look up your phone number. Right? which was uh, 720-2424, and I said, 2424, gentlemen, is Jesus. 
in the concordance. Well, let's shut them up real quick. So I drove from jail to jail to jail down to Victoria in the back of this police car and they picked up a young kid who was murdered someone the night before and blah, blah, blah. And uh, it, it was a bit of a retard. He didn't really realise he'd done something wrong. He just killed someone, you know. Yes. So this kind of thing to deal with. So then I got thrown in maximum security in uh, uh, Victoria, Wilkinson, Wookie, maximum security. And the locals don't know it's a maximum security where they put all the really hard, hard people. Because I'm in there and I'm, um, I'm whistling. And the, uh, the guards say to me, hey, you can't whistle in here. <clears throat> Yeah, right, no one tells me what to do. The idea was that uh, when they used to hang people there in the 50 years ago, um, the guards would whistle. So the, the crims objected to them whistling as a sign of disrespect when they're going to hang someone. So, so what? I'm not hanging a bastard, I've done it myself. So anyhow, I walked into the uh, mess hall and this cop had just told me, to stop whistling, I told him to get stuffed, right? So I'm whistling away, and all, the, all these tough guys, tattooed mongrels, all built up like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, they're all looking at me sideways, right? So I walked in and I picked up the tray, put some food on it, and went and sat in the most convenient spot. And these three thugs sitting there said, Hey, that's so and so, see, he's been sitting there for the last 10 years. I'm like, Fuck off. Right, so I told them where to go. And then this thug sh showed up with cut in tattoos built like Arnold Watson and I told him to fuck off. Huh? So the conversation was all focused of 150, 60, 70, 80 men listening to every word I said. And primarily, I said, all you bastards are in here for some reason or other, child molesters, murderers or whatever. Because if it wasn't for the police, right, the streets wouldn't be safe to walk in. Mm. Right? And one guy had been worked over with a bat, baseball bat. And uh, I said, what do you do about it? He said, nothing. I said, why don't you go to the cops? Well, they just sign us over the whole damn area. Huh? He said, what? I said, look, your enemy's enemy is your friend. I said, what if they come in and they bash your little girl to death? Well, they raped your child, right? Would you want the police to come and shoot her? Save the trouble? Said, What's wrong with you bastards, right? You're in here for a reason. Save your time and get out and become straight, right? That's basically what I told him, isn't it? So anyhow, this got to the warden. Next thing I'm invited to the warden. And he's telling me, he said, oh, you can't whistle in here. He's like, fuck you, if I whistle, do it all like. <laughs> right? I said, you know my story, you know what's going on. You don't believe it, I don't care. Mm -hmm. right? So anyway, I end up at Wookiee Maximum Security for seven days. And then they fly me in chains on a small plane over to uh, Port Coquitlam to get locked up on the 17th of June, <laughs> 1995. Which, which is, of course, the, the uh, anniversary of my birth in uh, 2 BC. Now, the... Uh, the point being is at that time I'd made uh, a lot of waves in Canada and uh, I've got the psychiatrist and all those people on my side because um, Pauline, my wife at the time, was a uh, paranoid schizophrenic mm -hmm. and I did threaten to kill her. That's how I got locked up. But I was threatening her soul, not her body. Mm -hmm. Big difference. So anyhow, that got me into the, uh, the system. And uh, I was watched by the uh, people who were intelligent in Simon Fraser University and other people across the, the uh, Canada who were sympathetic to the knowing the system and how evil it is in Canada because it's just as probably worse than bloody uh, mm. the United States. Mm. They're all, in, all yes. up each other. So uh, coming back to Australia, well, I've been here a long time and stirring shit at the, every day I can. So these two policemen come to the door. Saturday night. Saturday night. Little tap. tap, tap. Saturday night at the house. And we've had women out here, we've had different coppers and so forth, and the women are more aggressive than the men, actually. And Usually looking for me, however, not this time. Yeah, mm -hmm. So anyhow, the guy says, Brian? I said, yeah. I'm not leaning against the door looking down at him, right? Funny thing was, I was fumbling with the new key, trying to get the door open. <laughs> and I didn't realise you've got to turn the clockwise to open the door, right? Like, logic. Yes. I'm just having a... And right? so you're locking it. I'm locking the damn thing because mm. you must have already had a lot. I'm not. Hey, I don't know. So he says, Brian, very, very sheepish. And I said, yeah. He said, uh, got all these papers out. He said, I got a complaint. Yeah, what? He said, anti-Semitic. It's rude. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. So he reads out what was I supposed to have said. And I said, well, I can't actually remember saying that exactly. I said, but you've got to remember that the, the show that you're talking about, because it was one of these shows, it was December of 2014. I thought he said 2008, two, uh, 208 show. But I said, it doesn't matter. Because I always say to the Jews, I'm going to get them anyhow. Because he's right now, I will kill all the Jews, I will do this, I'll do this, and they're all fucked, and blah, blah, blah. Which <laughs> I said on the radio, which I did. Um, I said, but you've got to realise who you're talking to. I said, this is a show that is talking about prophecy. I said, I personally am not going to kill any Jew. Right. I said, but they're all out of here. Mm. I said, there's prophecy. So the Jews are the biggest problem in the world. Now, there's Jews I know, I've told them, I've known Jews, Jews that were all right. right. Why wouldn't they be Jews when you're in a, a world of Christianity that persecutes them every chance they've got for the last four, five, five hundred fucking years? I said, but, I said, it's the rabbis of the problem. And the world is dominated by an occult that is under the flavour of Judaism, which is going to be destroyed. Which is prophecy. So I'm going to do it. Absolutely. So he said, well, in this climate, so climate, <laughs> right? the anti-Semitic climate, <laughs> yes. right? So I didn't launch too far, and I said, but listen, I said, you, sh you should be, by now, you're a policeman, right? So by now, you should know who I am. You should know that the Pope has recognised me. You should know that the Queen has been served to get her ass off the throne, right? Mm. I said, you people should know that one. So I'm inviting the police from all over the country, I don't care. Come here with guns drawn if you like. Sit down and have a cup of tea. <laughs> and I'll talk to you and I'll explain it to you so you know what the fuck is going on, right? And know who you're talking to. So this is my invitation to the police and we will send a copy of this to the police in Harvey Bay. And yes, I have a great deal of problem with the Jews. Um, I don't like them. I don't like their policies. I don't like the way they lie continuously. If their lips are moving, and I don't like the way they take advantage of uh, anyone who is Christian or not. But they are the warmongers of the earth, and they're not saying. Even though they go to the synagogues, they're not saying to the rabbis, "Stop bombing people in Gaza Strip. Kick out Netanyahu as a psychopath. Even his psychiatrist committed suicide because he just couldn't deal with it, right?" Yes. I said, and the world supports it. And Australia supports it. You've got people in Afghanistan who support it. For what? Because the Jews want to destroy the world. Hitler was right. And I told a couple of us Hitler. I said, because they, they mentioned Hitler, didn't they, yeah. in their complaint? Yeah. And you said you supported him. I did, absolutely. I wish I'd have been on the team of the execution squad. Mm. Because of this, not because I would... Like, I ain't God, after all. And therefore, I'm going to get blamed anyhow. Whoever dies is blamed on me. Now, what I'm saying to the police, basically, is that if the Jews had been taken care of like Hitler was supposed to have done and been blamed for, but he's such a nice man, he didn't do it. And that Eisenhower was responsible for two million soldiers being starved to death and diseases in the concentration camps after, after they took over Germany and how 130,000 people died in 30 minutes in Dresden or less, right? that there's no possibility of anyone being killed by the German people and the soldiers and the SS in the concentration camps. It didn't happen. Right? We've got all proof in the world still, about that. Still be burning now, you know, I'm talking to you bloody policemen here. You should be able to work it out. Just look it up, bloody David Irving. Just look at a couple of his... Or a man, a Jew himself, a man named Cole, who was on a Phil Donahue show, who had been to these places like Auschwitz, and there's no way in the world any of the gassings took place. And also you've got the popes, and how the popes all the way through have been prophesied by another pope, a good pope, right, Gregory the Thirteenth, that he prophesied what was going to happen, and that he heard a voice talking, something like a Job prophecy, Leo. of uh, Satan talking to the Lord. And the Lord gives Satan what he wants, a uh, hundred years to take over the Catholic Church. That's a good thing. Because now we've sorted it all out, right? So Christ comes back to his church, and what do I do? I'll get rejected by the Antichrist, the man who will 
tear a baby out of his mother's womb and smash its head against the wall because he's a Jesuit, which is down the street here on the way to the police station, Jesuits, right, teaching our children. Xavier College. These same monsters, right, all swear an oath to take a baby out of the mother's womb and smash its head against the wall. That's a Jesuit oath. So I've got Francis, who was told by the very lovely man, who's a bit slow, Benedict. He actually thought Pope John Paul II was a good man. He's a Jew. He's the one that introduced all sorts of Satanism into the, into the uh, church. You can worship a bloody pile of frog shit and get into heaven. You don't need God no more. So, what's happening in America? We've got the FEMA camps. Just look at up, you people. You're, you're supposed to be policemen. I mean, you're going to be a detective. Use your wits. Go in at home. Go to the local library if you like. If you don't want to get your bone bloody... Because you're probably bugged at home anyhow what you're doing. Go to the local library and just type in the few of the facts I'm talking about. FEMA camps, guillotines, guillotines in these rail carriages. 120 has been delivered from China with the guillotines in it. Three layers. Right? For grounding people up. That's going to happen right now. Right? And all you're fucking concerned about is whether I said I'm going to kill a Jew or not. I'm going to kill them all. Who don't repent. The big difference here. Right? Now, I've known some good Jews. Don't worry about that. Friends of mine are Jews. As a matter of fact, when I went to the Noahide Laws, another one you should, people should be looking up the Noahide Laws, which controls Americans in 1984, when uh, under President... Uh, 1991. 1991, under President, what's his face? Senior. Bush Senior. Bush Senior. They guillotine people. There's laws in America for capital punishment they guillotine. This is all Talmudic laws. So the Talmud laws are now laws of of uh, the so-called country, which is Israel, which doesn't really exist because they're not Jews anyhow. These are all Khazars out of Russia, Zionists, that have invented and taken hold of the Zionism by the throat and control every commercial business in the world that's got anything worth money-wise on the stock market. All newspapers, you name it, they're in control of it. So therefore, they want you all dead. Now, you're Australians. Right? I mean, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of respect for you because you just haven't got the balls to get up. The women probably will do a better job, right? Because they're the mothers. They're the ones when they go and look at soy, it's so good for you, right? Drink that and see what happens, right? You men, six to four inches tall with a dick that long because you've been drinking soy all your life. That's what happened to you, son. Or little girls who actually become males. Right? And look at America today. They've now brought in laws where you, if you're a homosexual, even to the point where God has to apologise for Sodom and Gomorrah being destroyed, that's what these silly bastards are on about. That's what you live in. All of you people here in Harvey Bay, go into the local RSL and see women there look at 400 pounds. Why is that so? I can tell you why. Because of what they're getting fed in the food in the supermarkets. Right? It's got your chemtrails. Look up occasionally. See the fucking chemtrail going over here. Right over the police station. Look, what's going on up there? What are they doing that for? Who says we can have chemtrails because of what? What about Nibiru coming in? Ever thought about that? It's all over the internet. Matter of fact, if you look at a couple of shows back on ours, it's been up there. We've got photographs of the moon on the dark side, which not, should not be seen. Right? This is four or five days ago. And you can still see the moon being reflected of something in space over Australia. What is it? Wake up. This is you uh, in Harvey Bay. So don't come fucking out here giving me a hard time because I'm going to kill all the fucking Jews. Right? I didn't say I'm going to kill all the Jews. I'm going to get all the rabbis and all these bastards that don't worship me. Because I'm number one, son. That's it. Whether you like it or not. Right? Now the two policemen came out here the other night. They were nice. What's well, in this... In this in this climate, we can't talk about the Jews. Fuck the Jews. I can talk about anyone and anything and any time, any place, where I like. Right? So don't give me this shit that come out here complaining about me. And going back to December, what about all the other fucking times I've been saying I'm going to kill the Jews? Right? Why don't you come and arrest me and put me in court? Because I'll tell you why, I'll ask the judge, who do you swear your oath to? And it's Lord Jesus Christ. And Hello? God Almighty, you mean? Well, I can prove it. Now you're running out of time. I'm running out of patience. 
You're either with me or against me. If you ain't with me, you're a problem. So you better start smartening up. Now, I don't know whether I can get all of all the names and addresses of the policemen that's in at uh, probably 30, 40, 50 of us in at Harvey Bay. Don't know. So I should be able to address it to all of you police in there. Give you all a CD. Look this show up. Watch what I'm saying to you. Come out and talk to me. All right? Because your job is to support every baby in Australia. Not some fucking Luciferian occult that you happen to be a Freemason with on the side of your cars, black and white, black and white, black and white, or blue and white. Right? Freemasonry that is. Freemasonry is Jewish. You know that? And what's the God of Freemasonry? Look it up on the internet. I've got a Bible here, I'll show you. Where is it? Yeah, on the foot. Freemason Bible. To be taught in all churches. It's the official version. If you're a Freemason, you get one of these, and the first 80 pages or so is Solomon. Solomon's temple is a black witch. Right? One that this temple was destroyed, it was destroyed for a reason. Right? It was rebuilt by King Cyrus, the Persian, predicted by Isaiah 180 odd years before he was born. Right? To the God of Jesus, Yahweh. Daniel, Yahweh, Ezekiel, Yahweh, Isaiah, Yahweh, Job, Yahweh, Enoch, Yahweh. Right? All the same. And then the Babylonian mystery religion comes in from your Bible will actually have it in there because they have to leave some things in because they can't willy nilly take out what they like. They alter one word here and there, so forth. They want to make it sound like Jesus talking or God talking. It's not. In the book of Revelation, it's talking mystery Babylon religion. What's that? That's where the Babylonians invented Moses. And the last sacrifice was Jesus because he's a lamb of God. It's a synonym, right? It's a parable. My name's Parable. Marshall. Hebrew. Marshall. Right? It doesn't make sense that the last sacrifice was to do for something very spectacular. Get the Jews to do it and then have the head Jew, Caiaphas, holy shit, Jesus shows up two days later in front of him in his office with his father-in-law and wife and he writes a letter of resignation to Babylon, to the Sanhedrin, does not tell you? Why is he going to Babylon? Why don't he write to Rome? Oh no. Why not write to Jerusalem? Oh no. It's got to be somewhere else. Babylon. Why? Because it was taken over by the Babylonian Jews. Later on they become the Jews that would kill Jesus. Hello? They were conned into it because the blood contained the soul. The soul pours out. So now you've got dead on the cross, no flesh, just dead, blood, gone. Flesh laying there, no blood. Put into the shroud of Turin. Soul comes back in. I've told people forever. As the soul leaves and the soul comes back in, passes through the shroud, back into the body and resurrects it from the dead. Because the soul is then worn on the outside. Isaiah 63, look it up for fuck's sake. It's not that hard. So, God comes back. When? Now. Why? Because this is the end of time. We've crossed the equatorial line of the Milky Way galaxy. It's a big time clock. We've gone across it, the chronograph. The centre of the Milky Way galaxy, 100,000 light years wide. Hello? Times pi is what? Pi. One time pi is pi, you know that? God is one. Alpha. Times pi is pi. Not hard, is it? So then you have the Greek geometry. When I'm born, 888 minutes, sunrise to sunset to moonrise. Brother, 8.88 years old. Then I. Child molester. Illegitimate. Goes on and on and on. Mission to the stars from Jupiter. Why Jupiter? 88,800 miles wide. It's Jesus the Greek. To Saturn, inwards to the planets. Put my body weight in all those planets, the same number as the areas of Shredder Terrain, and it was 31.68 fucking astronomical units on the moment I was born. 2.22 in the morning. Why 2.22? That's how many times the word truth is found. That's how many times the word wisdom is found. That's my body weight today. I'm one big hairy asshole. And believe it, I'm an asshole. 
I'm here to judge, not to say hello, you're very nice people. So get your finger out your ass. And if you're going to complain about me threatening anybody, I'm threatening the fucking whole world. Plus, we'll start with Harvey Bay fucking police department. How's that? Come and arrest me for that. It is a threat. A very real threat. Well, I'm not going to do it. If I, I can't get my hands on a gun, if I could, I suppose I would. However, the angels, they don't have problems with killing people. I've already judged the earth. You're all fucked, unless you believe in me. It's as simple as that. So, have a nice day. I feel better now. That is all according to the KISS principle of keep it simple, stupid. God doesn't mince his words. He speaks plainly. I've been asked a few questions like, uh, were there dinosaurs? Yes, there were. What causes gravity? The spinning of the uh, interior of the Earth comes through as a, as a, uh, when you open a bottle of, of soda water, the bubbles will form universally at the same time. Well, take the pressure off gravity and the Earth come into existence from the heavenly realm. The actual absolute temperature of space is the same number as the completed height of the pyramid in pyramid feet. Right. Same number, 484.9 Fahrenheit, below zero. So you've got feet, that's the height of the pyramid. So at the centre, with this material coming through, it comes through in a spin. And that causes the gravity to alter. In other words, it's throwing off EMF fields and gravitational fields and so forth. So animals can be a lot larger and wander around because they're lighter. When Mars bumped into the Earth, and that was during the time when the, the solar system has got to move, otherwise the Earth would be sucked in and all the planets would be sucked into the Sun. We're talking about a tiny dot compared to the Sun, the size of it. So the Sun is dropping through space at the fall of Adam parable, and when it reached a certain point away from the Milky Way galaxy equatorial line, it has to come back. I'll give you a simple equation. If you go back 4.5 billion years, how far south would the Earth be with the solar system at 69,000 kilometres per hour? Well, I can tell you, a long, 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 long way, much further than the width of the Milky Way galaxy itself. So why is that so? Because you're bopping back and forwards, right? Now, it doesn't mean it's been going on for 50 million years. It means it's been going on and a creation occurred so that the Earth and solar system is moving at a certain rate through speed, through time and space. Therefore, the chronograph of time is the equatorial line, which is laid out by the Mayans after they've been cutting each other's hearts out. They sort of stop for a few seconds and work out a bit of mathematics, come up within 33 seconds in 500 million fucking years of getting the orbit of the moon right. So therefore, it's probably not the Mayans who did it, that wrote the Mayan calendar. Probably not them. They had a habit of taking little girls and skinning them alive and wearing their, their skins as coats. I've been there. I cast them all out. And in fact, the Canadian's psychiatric department has videos of me casting the demons out. Two occasions in the Yucatan. So when Mars bumped into the Earth because of the equatorial movement of the solar system went and stopped falling and then gravity of the equatorial centre line pulls it back and it started to accelerate back towards following the Sun because the Sun draws the Earth and the Earth is drawn the sun is drawn by the Milky Way galaxy. So as it's going back up, Mars bumped into the Earth. Very gentle bump. It caused a wave several hundred miles high because the water, there's none on Mars, think about it, where's it all gone? It poured onto the Earth. And this increased the level after it all settled down by 168 feet. This is caused by the fact that all of the water was drawn onto the Earth when the South Pole lined up with the North Pole of the Earth and they bumped together. Very slowly. For over a 40 day period, there's a huge amount of water started flowing onto the Earth. So as the Earth's rotating, it rotates through this 100 mile high or so wave of water. An ocean that high. Naturally, when Mars moved away, what happened? The water settled down and we have Mediterranean 
which was at one stage landlocked and the water evaporating from it was partially replaced by the water pouring in from all the different rivers, in particular the Nile, through the Black Sea and so forth. And the waterfall 9,000 feet deep. If you look at the, the maps of the Mediterranean, just up near the border of Palestine, you find it 16,000 feet deep. So there was this gigantic waterfall. As the water's falling, it's turning to vapour, of course, and it gets evaporated up, rains back down, back over Africa, and so forth. However, once the water of Mars was on the Earth, it opened up the Gibraltar Straits. So the water flowing in through Gibraltar is only 14 kilometres wide. It's had enough power there to supply all of Africa and all of Europe with fucking fuel. All you've got to do is tap it. It's one directional. All the time. It's 4,000 miles long is the actual Mediterranean. So the amount of water that evaporates off it can never be replaced by the water flowing in from the Atlantic. Hello? I think it's uh, France has got 48 nuclear power plants. Or more. You don't need any of them. None. Zero. Kaput. So when the impact occurred, the rotating sphere of iron ore, which was molten, 2200 degrees Celsius, is spinning at a very high rate. Therefore, gravitation is thrown out, making things lighter. But when it started to slow down after the impact, it was sudden. And that slowed right down Therefore, the gravitational field is flowing out from the centre of this spot where the Earth had been coming, pouring through from the heavenly realm, another realm, right? It was slowing down, so therefore gravity got higher, and animals dropped dead in this spot. And, of course, you had the, also the weather change, and it was instantaneous. People could say that, oh, it took 2,000 years. Fuck that, it took minutes, right? And this why there's huge dinosaurs and and you go up in Russia and Siberia and these places, you've got the huge animals that are similar to an elephant, with the food still in their mouths, frozen stiff, standing up. So, was a dinosaur possible? Now, a dinosaur is also dependent upon the temperature, whether it has males or females in its eggs. Crocodiles, they will prove that. Imagine that. So it's not determined by the, the chromosome, male or female chromosomes, is determined by the temperature of the egg. So, if the egg is hot, they'll have more males. If it's cold, and less. And if you haven't got males, and you've got more females, what well, have you got? Nothing. You've got enough in certain areas of the world to sustain the population and so on. So that takes care of that. What was the other questions we was asked, by the way? Oh, well, that was this morning, but I... I um wanted to read Rodney's amazing story. Rodney's in the chat room now with Diana and hello Adam. Hi guys, good to have you there. And it uh, looks like Diana's been at it again. <laughs> She's, uh, yes Adam, uh, we had the police at the door Saturday night and uh, yeah, I had a quiet chat with them. A complaint. <laughs> anyway. They wouldn't give me a copy of the charge either. No, it was all very civil. They went away uh, just... Well, one was standing back, a sort of a a socky sort of fellow, he looked like a nice fellow. And the guy I was talking to, he was a very nice fellow, handsome man as well. Mm. Girls love him. <laughs> so uh, he, he was saying, oh, not in this climate. Not in like, this climate. Political climate, yeah, right. What political climate do you want to stop this massacre of all your children and the unborn yet to come and they're trying to start World War III? Right? Uh, go to America, just see what's going on. Type in FEMA camps, type in FEMA guillotines. Type in FEMA carriages, trains, mm. right? It's all there. I was down in Louisiana and there was 300,000 people disappeared down there because they were of welfare, poor people and black mainly, but white people as well. They put them into the FEMA camps and chopped their heads off just to see what would happen. Nothing. They blew up the Mississippi. When I went drab down it, this is just before it happened, before Katrina, when I drove down it, you would need a military attack to do such a devastation to allow the water to flow out of the Mississippi into the Louisiana. It happened. They got photographs of the military doing it. There's even military maps, Navy maps, showing how they was intending with the deep horizon 
which is owned by the Queen of England, that was uh, drilling down 20 odd thousand feet into the side of this highly pressurised uh, uh, bubble of oil, crude, to lubricate the Madrid line which goes up the Mississippi. So they were so confident that the Navy has drawn inland seas of what it was going to be like after they succeeded in doing what they did. Well, I stopped that. I tried to do it, but I stopped that. I caused 7,000 earthquakes to occur on either side of the Mississippi on the Madrid fault line to turn the leading edges of the two tectonic plates into rubble. That lasted about an hour and a half on the fucking internet. Right? Because I mentioned it. It was all up there at one stage. All the photographs, where that was happening, all the earthquakes. Try and find it yourselves. You're police, go and do it. See if you can do something about it. Now, um, or, hello Andrew and hi John Lynch, you're in the chat room. Um, the other topic that's on everybody's lips, of course, is the Supreme Court of the USA uh, recognising and upholding gay marriages right across the nation. That means... Not one family. homosexual will survive the coming wrath of myself. I ain't going to do it first. I wish I could. I would love to. However, my angels would do it. I've already given judgment. It's going to happen, right? They're almost here. So with that, I'll, I'll go over to Rodney's, because that's where it It's began. not an election, by the way. Yeah. Okay. It answers that. Rodney has an amazing story. And it began, our chat began this morning. All right, he says, I have the apostolic letter printed and going to sign it in purple and mail as soon as I get a few dollars to send. I, I told him for anybody who uh, is um, mm. uh, sending to Yah, don't, uh, yes, registering it is good as proof of delivery, etc. However, if you don't have the dollars, just use ordinary post. We will be your proof of delivery. We're either going to get it or not. Um, and uh, here we go, let's start with this conversation. Lovely people to choose, no? Oh, yeah, well. The sweat. Didn't it happen in a body report when the cops come out here? <laughs> no, he says it all the time. <laughs> Listen to this story from Rodney. I am getting back there. It's taking. A while. <sighs> oh, this is where it began. Um, Rodney said this morning, Hi, I'm looking for the video on Yahweh reclaiming the rainbow. Uh, that was in one of our early shows as I uh, made that icon with, uh, yeah, Yahweh's taking back his rainbow. And because it's all about the LGBT out of here, as we were just discussing, uh, would sure like to post it over here with what is going on in the USA. No hurry, maybe Yah can speak on this again as our supreme ding-dongs over here have legalised gay marriage across the board. Well, you heard Dead, mate. Carry on. Have just spoken. Um, uh, uh, Rodney says, my grandfather told me to expect it 40 plus years ago. I say, yes, the fall of the Roman Empire due to the same as it is with all empires. They fall as soon as we get Great to the point. Design. Yes. Then Rodney goes on to say, now listen to this about Rodney's grandfather. He was the one who died preaching his retirement sermon. His last words God is real, and if he wants me, I'll go right now. He fell over dead at the pulpit. Then Rodney goes on to say, We got an angelic card signed by him three days later. He was the one that taught me Enoch and told me to keep it to myself. Rodney continues, I am ready. He was my best friend. As a child, I was the first grandson. The place in North Dakota that I captured Brian's face in the sky was one mile from that church that he died in. 
He says, that's the condensed version. Looking forward to hearing you tonight. I ask permission to tell this story. He says, yes. He goes on, the card we got was made on a type of paper that no one made cards on. It was not delivered by the mail. I was there when it was slid in the mail slot. I looked outside and there was no one there. I carried it in to my grandma. When she opened, she smiled for the first time since he died. I was only 14 at the time and he didn't make me go to church that Sunday. I never got to say goodbye, but when I saw the card, I knew somehow it would be all right. He continues, I used to say the names of the angels with him. He told me, I need you to keep this to yourself until it is time. And then uh, this is the, what, what is interesting about this is uh, the notice of his death. His name was Melville Taylor, North Dakota. His date of birth was Friday, August the 5th in 1904. And then the date of death simply says August 1975. Age at death, 71 years. Last known residence, Grand Forks, North Dakota, zip code, the latitude, longitude. He says, I don't know why the day isn't there. I say, perhaps your father, your grandfather was Enoch and taken up. And Yah has been through uh, Grand Forks in 1991. Um, Rodney continues, he knew, wasn't your typical preacher. I was told he was a drunk for a while. While he was a preacher, he dug graves for money. And we talked a bit about Enoch. I say that uh, the book of Enoch was very well known in the early times. But that was, uh, it was too profound, so they, they excluded it. Rodney says, yes, he wanted me to know it. I said it was Enoch who gave the messages and measurements of how to build the pyramid to his son Methuselah, who lived the 968 years. 69. 69 years, rather. Uh, Rodney says, I quit going to the churches with mum because of their lack of talking about it. I say, I read Enoch for the first time many years ago in Canada as Jesus. He referred to it. Had it been in, in, included, there would not be the confusion there is now. Rodney says, yes, I know it opened my eyes when I rediscovered it in my search for truth. All the childhood conversations came back to me. Then I say, because when I was talking about his dream the other day, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't do a thorough job as far as I'm concerned. There was much more, much more significant, and I'll explain it to you. I, I said in the message to Rodney, Yah's dream the other morning was basically how it is described in Enoch, the earth's kings before him pleading for themselves, going away knowing that they were doomed. And in the dream, Yah handed them each an envelope with their sentence in it. And the, now this is interesting, listen to this guys, because it, um, the predominant colour in the dream was orange. People were dressed mm. in orange. Was the envelope orange as well yep. that you were handing yep. out? Uh, now, of course, in the USA, the colour of orange is uh, prison garb. And there's that new, well, that, that TV program that is disgusting. We attempted to watch the first episode the other night, had to turn it off. Um, what the new black is orange, and it's about uh, the prison system in the USA. And we were interested in it because uh, our P friend Peter here in Harvey Bay, his daughter apparently has a lead role in it now um, and her name is Rose. I couldn't see her in the credits, perhaps she's just come into it in, in the third or fourth season, something like that. But anyway, because um, Peter has his own story about what he's been battling with, a lack of truth there. But um, now also, I was thinking when Yah told me this that uh, the predominant colour was orange 
you have the orange light before the, the stop light when you've got your, your green, orange, yellow, and it's always a warning. The orange is a warning in the world of uh, traffic lights, etc. And three days ago, or two days ago, when Yal was um, looking at more documentaries on the Shroud of Turin and the 3D imaging that others have done, he stopped and then took a screen capture to reverse the uh, colours of the 3D imaging that was on the screen. And of course, uh, what was uh, like a, a, a greeny colour on the screen turned orange. No, that's not what happened. What, what, what do you explain what happened? I took a screen capture of the uh, image that they had discovered that in the Shroud of Turin, when they did it under the analyzer, which was used in space exploration for Mars and um, give the contours of the surface of the planet. So it could give you the 3D image from the uh, photographs sent back by spacecraft. So the 3D image um, people, the guy by the name Shoemaker was talking about, he said he was sent a copy of the image and he took a uh, photograph of one of the workers and um, it showed no 3D qualities and then he put in the Shroder Turin, the face of Jesus, body of Jesus front and back and it gave off this 3D image. <clears throat> so you can take a screen capture by printing print screen, drop it into a, uh, a bitmap and then um, you s just go into the properties and you can change it yes. to uh, invert yeah. colours. Well, when you do that, it won't do it. What you've got to do is you've got to go out, you've got to save it, come back in, select an area and then it'll change it to orange. But any other bitmap you do, no matter what it is, even of the shroud itself, because I did do that, um, just to test the, uh, the system to see if it was working. I took an a actual photograph of the shroud of Turin in the negative and the positive image, plonked it into the bitmap, and then immediately uh, select all, changed it. Or, as I dropped it in, I did it also to uh, change the uh, image itself, and it reverses it, inverts it. Well, it won't do that with the 3D. You've got to go out, save it, select it, and then go back in, and then you can change it. So that's another little feature of the uh, 3D image taken by this uh, the scientist in America who developed the camera for doing so. And uh, yet it still transfers some secret into your bitmap and therefore you just can't change it like you can an ordinary bitmap. You have to fool with it to get it to change and it changes to a bright orange. Now, the point is that this is a 3D meaning it's alive, it's living, that's what 3D is. We are all 3D you know, bodies walking around. Um, that it, when he did this and it finally did invert the colours on this 3D image of the Shroud of Turin, he said that is the orange that was the predominant colour of my dream. Right. So what have we got? We've got the living image of the Shroud of Turin walking around in this three-dimensional uh, plane that we're on. And then all of the leaders of the world gathered before him, being handed out their sentences which were in the colour of the inverted 3D Shroud of Turin. Hello. <laughs> anyway, just uh, one of those things that uh, makes sense. Just up. one of those things, one of those yeah. crazy things. Um, oh, now this is uh, more interesting information about Rodney's family and the location of this church where his grandfather dropped dead on that Sunday morning. He says that church is also right outside the Grand Forks Air Force Base, the seat of North American nuclear power, with the bomber wing and missile silo control there. Rodney says, I am hoping to repaint it this summer outside if I can get back there. I have never been inside it since he died. It is still there, not being used, but I don't think they dare to tear it down. He says, I want to make the outside nice for the 40th anniversary of his death. And then uh, he said, 
says at that time, so this is 40 years ago, it was the powerhouse of the bombers. Nowadays, it is the drone controller. Hello? <laughs> how, how about... Uh, Italian, bloody America, man. How, how about something is dropped on it to demolish it rather than preserve it with a coat of paint on the outside? Um, he finishes with, that was the German side of uh, family, mum's side. Dad's side goes back to Norway. Of course, his last name being um, Osmond. Anyway, very interesting message from Rodney. And as a surprise, uh, this morning, oh, Andrea. Let's just send a message. Interesting. <laughs> Anna, listen to this. Yeah, okay. She says, hi, young Ash, I've got my DNA profile, which mm -hmm. is not much telling other than I had matched with these persons. Harrison got my attention. Smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello, Granny. Hello, <laughs> Granny. Granny Anna. <laughs> All right, let's go back over to the Spreaker deck. Yes, Diana, a shroud is, is the shroud is a warning to all. It is the only uh, verified. Well, in the it's well, it's the miracle of the universe. That's it in a nutshell. With all the science of today, they cannot explain it, they cannot reproduce it. Um, there's many examples of healings, which does happen when enough people are gathered together and focused on praying and, and the power of the mind. This is all part of uh, Jesus' teachings as well. Then supernatural healing, supernatural in the fact that the, uh, the repair of the DNA at the cellular level is sped up so it happens very quickly, instantaneously, or it can happen over a period of time therapeutically. And as you know, as, as we do, teaching all things to give the proper environment for the body on the inside as the swimming pool for the body itself to overcome dis-ease, etc. These are not really the miracles of today. And of course, any, any man and his dog can work, walk on water today. All it takes is a plane of uh, glass underneath. <laughs> A swimming pool or whatever to walk on it. Frozen like water this. works too. <laughs> Frozen water. What was your the lake in? Uh, oh, I, I, yeah, I used to do these silly impersonations of um, James Bond or whatever, and um, I did one of uh, James Mason, and uh, the poem would ring, and I'd be down working on that boat. Yeah, this is Sprat Lake. And it, so the Lord of the Manor is out strolling upon the lake. Fortunately. The lake is frozen and he will be back to return to court. <laughs> oh dear. And uh, oh, uh, John Lynch, that uh, um, that apology, apology from God, that's a satire site. We read all through that. It, it's, uh, it's satire. Well, Can you just send me apologising for anything? Oh yeah, totally, because God, uh, well you just heard God addressing the Harvey Bay police, we're going to be sending this to them. Um, that, I, that I am is very disappointed with Australians overall, let alone the fucking police force. Mm. See, getting back to the police force, you guys in Harvey Bay, your job is to protect your environment. That means all the little children coming up around you, you've got to protect them. And don't give a fuck what the government says. Your job, if, if, if you were sent into a situation, let's say some kid was robbing a bank, would you shoot him dead? No, you'd, stay, you'd try and save the kid, especially if it's your cousin mm. or your own son, mm. right? That's how you go look at everybody, right? And you're not doing your job. So the ones that's in a position to do the job is not doing it. You should be all going door to door, banging, saying, listen, there's this guy out in Harvey Bay or we're out in Turgum or wherever. He says it's Jesus Christ. And then the Pope says so. And the Pope are locked up. It's on the internet. Look at it out, check it out for yourself. That's what they should be doing. Go into every fucking place in the area. You coppers should be doing that because you work for me. You just don't realise it. 
and I'm going to get you if you don't do it. Right? You can't escape God. So if you haven't learned who I am now, man, you've got a problem. Oh, much sake. Didn't worry about the Jews. We're talking about the Jews. All right. I go into the fucking Harvey Bay RSL say, Hail Hitler. <laughs> we do too. Hail Hitler. As a matter of fact, I told the, um, the, uh, the vice president of the RSL, there's a young dude up there, I launched one day, this is before we left for Rome, just before we left for Rome, and uh, took the apostolic letter, all that, I, I informed them, and then of course told them, uh, of all the wasted lives that they commemorate every day at midday for their uh, moment of silence, standing, the wasted lives for the sake of the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not. These are the banksters, these are the terrorists, the thugs of today who are controlled by their father, the devil. And the one at the very top, of course, of course you know, Yezel Bubble, whatever you want to call it, is uh, the House of Rothschild, who controls it all. And then you have the rabbit dogs like Netanyahu and Obama and all the idiots. And well, here's Obama's countries. wife's a bloke. Hello. Yeah. You should have She's seen... got a bigger dick than I got. <laughs> you should have That's seen... That's saying something. My, I, I, I told my mother that uh, um, last time I was down there, and the, the, the scoffing was <gasps> like she didn't believe me. I said, hello. <laughs> I mean, it was an affront. Like, Michelle Obama is a bloke. And the reaction was, it was, that was abominable to hear, and then go straight to unbelief. Well, it is an abomination. The so-called democracy is demonocracy. There is no electing of these. These are appointed. And the farce of elections are just that. It's all a farce. Those who get in are those who are going to be the next puppet masters for world Jewry, the Jew world order. That's it in a nutshell. And so you've got these idiots in there playing their parts. And uh, when people find out the truth about it, they go from their state of ignorance to hearing something that is really abominable and then to unbelief. Like, you know, shoot the messenger. Oh, my mother's kind of got over that now because I, I, I keep on with her over and over and over telling her information. And I tell her, I'm telling you these things I did so, the old that, cow. so that in the future, as these things can't come to pass, you will know that I have told you so. So, gradually breaking down the, uh, the walls. Now it's time, um, it's time to go. Oh, it's a shame. It Aren't is. Getting longer? <laughs> no, it's time to go. But Diana, Diana has had her uh, particular run-ins with uh, the local police. I'd like to see you all out there from all over the world right to the Harvey Bay Police. Huh? Mention my name. H-E-R-V-E-Y Bay 4655 Queens Road, the corner of Queens Road and Torquay Road. <laughs> Spell Torquay for them. T Torquay, T O R Q U A Y. Torquay, Harvey Bay, four six five five. Yes, right to the uh, whatever it was. I suppose it's a sergeant or a, a. I don't know how the hierarchy works in these places, but you, you know what I mean. <laughs> Diana says, "Yep, sure have her. She's had her run-ins with." Her. <laughs> Yeah, she takes on the copies, no problem. Oh my goodness, you bow them up, babe, and everybody else that you come across. It's, it's literally, you know, they run for cover when they see Diana. How, Diana, how is uh, Michael Balderstone? Is he still around? And, and uh, Goddess from the local oh, radio station. Just, <laughs> <laughs> going down that memory That was quite lane. funny, I must admit. <laughs> the, uh, Michael Balderstone was the... Uh, mayor. Mayor of uh, Nimbin, which is a... Uh, a, um, alternative lifestyle. Alternative lifestyle. People are uh, hippies uh, in the old days and smoke dope and whatever. <laughs> and they have a radio show every day and I was invited to go on. And somehow, set it up. somehow, you were stuck. Oh, <laughs> yes, I, I was speechless. I couldn't say it because Clay Feet had given me a hash cookie and I'd never ever tried anything like it before. Yeah, but you didn't and know it was a hash cookie. 
No, no, he told me, and I had a little bit of it, just the smallest amount. Dino, Dino's a witness. You're a druggie then. Oh, hun, you, you know, we we're all there witnessing all what right, would so happen. <laughs> go into this, and we're sitting there with here's the mayor, and there's this not bad looking old man, probably 50 old, 60 years old, isn't it? Fine, as I say, an Australian stamp of a dog. Has a beard, has a Jesus And beard. then the, <laughs> the guy uh, was doing the show, and of course they're asking me questions. I'm asking, wait for you to kick in because nothing happened. And uh, so I thought, well, and this other guy is yapping on, and oh, what I didn't know, and I'm a bit dumb when it comes to this sort of stuff, because it, it, he, it's he too astounding for me to grasp. This guy is channeling the queen. No, no, goddess. The goddess. The goddess. The goddess. The goddess. goddess. Oh, of the universe. Yeah. See, even then, I got, haven't got that on. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Well, I did, because I had looked but you up say nothing. that I couldn't say anything, because I'd had this one bite of this hash cookie, and I'm, suddenly I can't speak. My brain is working... You know, just fine, and I'm not. Didn't I tell you it was quite speak. lovely or something like that for being a queen? No, 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 oh, a goddess. No, no, no. A anyway, Yaz being oh. interviewed by Michael, Michael Baldstone, who I think was pretty well embarrassed by this goddess, who happens to be the father of one of the local teachers, I think. Yeah, homosexual. And um, and I'm sitting at the side there, and in my brain, I wanted to tear this guy to pieces because I know exactly what he's doing, but he's behaving very camp. You know, at camp is very camp. And in this voice of a female, because he's channeling goddess, uh, goddess is saying to Yahweh, oh, you always were a cranky old thing, you know, as if, as if she knows Yahweh from the creation. Well, man alive, inside, I'm, I'm, I'm like the, the dog after the... I really didn't know what he was talking about. Was... <laughs> and Yahweh's just continuing. We were talking, talking about talking... taking the cure for the Aboriginals with the H1N1 flu. That's right. And at that time, you know, what was supposed to be coming in over Australia and, Australia and their intention Europe, was, it? Uh, it was 2010. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, anyway, all, all of these profound things and this idiot goddess. But the <laughs> next day they were warned that if they have me on again, the license will be pulled for the station. All right? What's that? The license was going to be pulled. If oh, I was yes. going to go back on the radio station. Yes, they were, yes, yes, they got an will email. Pull the license. Warning that they Now, that's what I'm trying to talk to you people who are the Harvey Bay police, all right? You are very, very responsible. I am that close to you. You've been out to my place many times. Yes. You know exactly who I am. You come and check on us as we leave the country. When we went to Rome, you turned up at now, 9 o'clock. Now, if you think that you're going to get away left. without any repercussions, remember you're a policeman. The policeman's job is to protect and serve. It doesn't matter whether I'm a lunatic or not, whether you think so or not. The point is, it's your job to investigate. How is it that I'm still alive? How is it that a Pope recognises me as being Christ? How is it that the Jews can complain probably from New York, right, about me in 2014, around December sometime, me saying I'm going to kill all the Jews? Well, God talking. As I said to these coppers, I said, this is God talking. It's prophecy, right? It's not me who's going to physically go out and strangle some Jew or blow them away. It's not me who's going to do it, but the angels will. I'm warning them. Right? And that applies to everybody who has perpetuated this monstrous society that we live in. It's judgment time. Hips are rubbish. Well, what happened in Hiroshima? Did you know when they bombed him at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, there's a man called Lawrence sitting in the co pilot seat and he's a Jew? Watching that was going to happen. It was a sacrifice. What about the 66 million Christians under Stalin, a Jew? Right. You're all capable of thinking and therefore seeking truth. You can say, oh, there must be life out in space. Where's the first OMO commercial coming in from some evolved solitary system out there that has got to be millions of years ahead of us? And... It's only 100,000 light years across, so therefore anything in the near proximity of our own solar system could say has evolved before us. Why is it there's no radio signal coming from 2 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy? How come? Think about it. Because it's creation. I am the creator, whether you like it or not. I cure all diseases, whether you like it or not. And if one of your monsters there that don't believe who I am, 
walked into this house and said they've got diabetes too or some other incurable disease, I'll, I'll cure you, irregardless of the fact that I might hate your guts for being the dog you are. Because you'll have a chance to repent. Get on the team. This is a personal message to the police in Harvey Bay. And I might even send it to Mary Borough and all the other little cities around here. Mm. However, we'll have to hand deliver it because Asia will stop it. Mm -hmm. Dan is confirming that he, she recently saw Goddess. She thought he might have died. But, um, Diana? Yes. She said, yeah, I just recently saw the moron calling himself the goddess. I thought he must have died because I hadn't seen him since then. The radio show was after the court in Lismore with the declaration and notice of claim to Judge Linden. <laughs> that was funny. They closed the court down for us on a Friday, busiest day of the week. Um, she said, yes, the radio show was warned by email not to have Yar on the show or they would have the show taken down. That is a fact. Uh, and she says, I'm still pissing them all off about it too. Good for you. All right. Okay. Well, with that, let's go. We're over time and we've got to get this to the Harvey Bay Police. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the uh, letter that we got back from the Queensland government waiving the latest tolls, you, the Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Leonard Gulatly Marshall, as the driver of the car, they, they have waived the toll. Let's forget about it, was there. Actually, I'll read it. It's just here. It's <laughs> so simple. <laughs> so really, these little things we do is uh, just for entertainment, baby. Are they going to change? It's not an election. I am who I am, that's it. Here, this was, is addressed to me, uh, Janelle Gillard and Marshall, and uh, it's about an infringement notice, and this was for unpaid tolls where I had signed a stat deck nominating the Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Leonard Gillard and Marshall as the uh, driver of the vehicle, and it was witnessed by a JP from the local Harvey Bay courthouse. Right. So we mailed right that the police station. So I mailed that off on our way to... Um, Port Moresby, and uh, this was waiting for me when I got back. Uh, Re-infringement notice. Uh, uh, thank you for your letter to the Department of Transport and Main Roads, TMR, received the 2nd of June 2015 for the above infringement notice, issued to you for failing to pay the deferred toll amount as required by demand notice from GoVIA. The matter has been reviewed and the decision has been made to waive the infringement notice. Please retain this letter for your records. <laughs> your sincerely senior advisor, tolling office unit, and it looks like an L Butte, B U T T E, is the signature on there. Is that but, a P or a B? No, it's a B. That looks like L B Butte. Um, now, I did that. Um, because I said to Yar, they have to address the notice. Normally, they would re-address the notice too, run it, and I've done that on a number of occasions. This time I said, well, they have to address it to the nominated driver, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, Brian Lillard, go lightly marshal. So rather than do that, they have waived the <laughs> infringement altogether. So with that... <laughs> There's a number of other issues I'm addressing. Um, yes, precedence has been set. <laughs> All right, guys, 69 minutes. We're uh, over and out for today. We'll be back tomorrow. So I'm warning the police. Investigate, do it properly. This is what they're doing to your children. Go pick up any, any piece of chocolate, any bar, any candy, any packet of food, and it's going to have soy in it, or something like that, which is targeting your children. But there's many, many other things that I'll talk to you about if you have the guts to come out and talk to them. 
Okay. With that, Lady Gators, thank you to everybody in the Remember, chat. Remember, boys and girls, I'm serious. Not an election. Shall we go out with Yah singing? What about crying in the chapel? <laughs> How about that? Here we go. I feel like it. <laughs> you show me crying in the chapel. Her tears I shed were tears of joy. I know the meaning of contentment. Now I'm happy with the Lord. Just a plain and simple chapel where humble people go to pray. I pray the Lord that I'll grow stronger. As I live from day to day, I've searched and I've searched, but I couldn't find no way on earth to gain peace of mind. Now I'm happy in the chapel. Where people are of one accord, we gather in the chapel just to sing and praise the Lord. Every sinner looks for something that will put his heart at ease. There is only one true answer. He must get down on his knee. Meet your neighbor in the chapel. Join with him in tears of joy. You'll know the meaning of content. Then you'll be happy with the Lord. You'll search and you'll search, but you'll never find no way on earth to gain peace of mind. Take your troubles to the chapel. Get down on your knees and pray. And your burdens will be lighter. And you'll surely find the way. The Go Light O Marshall Hour, Freedom Talk Radio dot net. Okay, back tomorrow, guys. Bye.